is Messi! It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. It's time for the biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world, in front of any player in the world, and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on ZFM Stereo. My station, your station. It's a very good evening and welcome to ZFM Sport, another edition on your favourite station, my station, your station, ZFM Stereo. This is the team that delivers all the stories that are on the pulse of what's happening in the world of sport, local as well as international. That team, Barry Manandi, Alois Mungira. Chris Gray, Sean Tafirinik is our producer, and my name is Mike Madoda. Now, scandal seems to dog Zifa wherever they go, no matter who is in office. And so on the home front, we zone in on 53 Livingston Avenue, where Zifa Executive Committee member and chairman of the Zimbabwe Referees Committee and Technical and Development Committee, Brighton Malandulem, faces the wrath of his colleagues in the board after making national team appointments without their consent. We also have some international sports news. Today being a Tuesday, we have our staple, the Formula One report, which is probably brought to you by Zimoko, where Pierre Gasly was left struggling to realize his maiden Formula One victory after delivering a shock result for the Alpha Tauri in the Italian Grand Prix. In Around the World in 60, we start in England. Mitchell Stark believes Australia's uh, rustiness has shown in the defeats to England in the first two T20 internationals. In Atlanta, Dustin Johnson, DJ, sounded an ominous warning to his rivals ahead of the US Open as he declared he was playing the best golf of his career shortly after being crowned the FedEx Cup champion. And in Florida, Serena Williams remains on course for a record equaling 24th Grand Slam singles title after coming through an epic fourth round contest to beat Maria Sakari. Top hit Tuesday, so we'll see what DJ Baz has for you halfway through the show before we get into the beautiful game. Kicking off with the UEFA Nations League where Italy returned to winning ways as Nicolo Barella's header just before halftime secured a 1-0 victory away to Netherlands. In news from France, Paris Saint-Germain sporting director Leonardo has hit out at the French FA for the manner in which he learned that Kylian Mbappe has tested positive for COVID-19. In Germany, Thiago Alcantara has been given additional time off by Bayern Munich and the next few days will be crucial in deciding his future. And in an update from Spain, Lionel Messi has returned to training with Barcelona for the first time since the fallout with the club over his future. So let's get into it. Our power play on top it Tuesday. This is Simi. It's called in Saba. The Warriors, the Chevrons, the Cheetahs, the Mighty Warriors and the Sables. From the pool to the track to the field, we are Team Zimbabwe. The Home Front. Local sports news and analysis. The one thing that we love to do right here on ZFM Sport is to keep it interactive during the show and even afterwards. So why don't you follow and interact with at ZFM Sport or simply search for us by name in our individual capacities. We tweet now and again, some of us even more regularly than you would think Sean Tafirinika being a case and point. So if you want to discuss sport, American sport, local sport, rugby, cricket, golf, Sean is your man. That's why he puts the show together. Now let's get into the show with news from the home front. It's controversy as usual from Zifa, where executive committee member and chairman of the Zimbabwe Referees Committee, as well as the technical and development committee, Brighton Malandule, faces the wrath of his colleagues on the board after making national team appointments without their consent. 
This is the same mishap that befell Zifa Vice President Gift Banda, resulting in his suspension and long drawn legal case. However, in the Malandula case, Zifa is claiming that he was misquoted despite the existence of an audio where Malandula is announcing a number of resolutions that were made by the technical and development committee. Now, let's get the thoughts of football pundit Hope Chizuzu before we get to hear the team in studio. That's a football pundit Hope Chizuzu speaking to our producer Sean Tafirinika earlier, making some pertinent points. But just in case you don't know what the resolutions are that were made by Malandola, if you listen into the audio recording, uh, he made or announced the appointment of Highlanders coaches Mandla Mpofu, Vegeteba Mpofu, as well as Melusis Mandla as assistant coaches of the under-23, under-20 and under-15 national teams. Malandola also announced that Mpofu would assist Ndiraya in the under-23 setup, while Ndlovu and Sivanda would deputize Pilani Nguve and agent Sao Ajira in the under-20 and under-15 teams respectively. Malawi well, Chiefs coach Tulani Sivanda was given the women's under-17 team where he would work with Evelyn Remai as well as Irene Mwanza. Those are just some of the appointments that were made. Barry Menandi the problem here is that uh, we are hearing one thing in the press we're hearing one thing from malandule in the audio recording which is so clear because he's making it definitive that these are the final appointments as ratified by zifa but zifa is coming around and say that no hang on hang on we have not yet ratified these appointments confusing as ever from 53 Livingston avenue uh, confusion, just a symptom of uh, the actual disease. The disease being that there's no uh, uh, center at, uh, at Zipa in terms of their communications, because that's what it is. We're not going to de- delve into the appointments and, and uh, uh, what whether they make sense or not, or whatever the case may be. Just the fact of making an announcement. It's the most simple task in communications. Now, the communications department led by Tolisani Guesela, uh, should be in control of every piece of information that comes out of the club. The fact that you've got a board member, albeit that he's uh, the chairperson of two uh, uh, committees, should not be speaking without the knowledge of express knowledge of the executive by way of Kolisani uh, Guesela. It's a sign that there's something that needs to be fixed uh, on the Zifa side. Them coming out and trying to defend themselves and saying that he was misquoted and uh, these were suggestions and proposals from the technical committee that still need to be ratified by the board. Well, why was he speaking in a public platform or forum or at least saying things that went public? Uh, Chris, does it concern you, you know, from a media and PR perspective that over the last few weeks, in fact, maybe even a couple of months, that Zifa has been very reactionary in the way that they've been communicating. So uh, stories and things are happening. And then we hear Zifa speak. Then we hear Zifa react. Then we hear Zifa threaten. Surely Zifa should be the one leading the narrative, especially if it's information out of their own head of office and anything that football, uh, that football, um, that concerns football. Definitely. Um, I think you have an issue where um, for Zimbabweans in general, people think public relations is getting um, on the back of a story and then adjusting the narrative after this thing has already um, become an issue. Public relations is also about stating what the narrative is from your perspective, from the word go. It's being able to manage what information is going out and who is relaying that information, making sure those relationships with the media are um, really good so that when you need to relay a message, your message is relayed in the way that you wanted to. Now where you've got multiple messages that are coming out of the same organization from senior members of this organization, then you've got a very big problem. Like Barry mentioned, there's supposed to be a pipeline of communication. There's supposed to be um, almost a procedure where everyone in the organization knows before I make a public statement or if I've been asked a question in regards to this, this is supposed to be my standpoint. We don't have that at the moment at Zifa and the fact that we've got these issues is also just symptomatic of the fact that there's something of a mess going on at Zifa because you wouldn't have this issue, these kind of issues if everything was being administered properly by the organization itself. Alois, you know, it's story after story, it's controversy after controversy, and you take a look at the public image 
uh, of Zifa. It's not a very good one. And therefore, it's no surprise that uh, very few organizations, if any, are willing to partner with Zifa at any level whatsoever to take our football forward. Everyone just seems to step back because they don't want to be caught in such controversies as the ones that we are reading now and hearing about Malandule. Yeah, Mike, uh, it's, it's very sad, you know, when you have a situation, a big organization like Zifa, where you actually don't have a structure. You know, who wants to do business with an organization this big, but do they, they don't have any structure? You see, they are... Their lack of structure is actually so blown out there because they are a big institution as supposed to be setting an example. But they are not setting any example. They are actually showing bad... Okay, they are showing us an example, but the bad example that is, you know, it's, <laughs> it's very sad, really. Like, when Chris was actually uh, spot on, when he said, you know, it seems like there is nothing. You cannot have a chairman of a committee misquoted when they are supposed to be a channel. Why, why, why is he misquoted in this place? That's the actual issue. That's why he's supposed to... Why is he misquoted? Why is he being misquoted in the first place? They are supposed to be channels to be followed. So this is actually like really bad. And you know, like you say, it never rains for Ziva. It's actually pouring. You know, scandal after scandal. You know, mishap after mishap. Where are we going? You know, you, 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 you look... You know, recently the Zifa chairman was announced a date, a date for the resumption of the league. The league doesn't know about it. Yeah, and, so and why the was league, the chairman announcing the date when the, there's a the person who is supposed to be doing uh, those things? Uh, uh, the league has since oh, come we out. We have a big then, problem. Uh, right? Big problem. The league has, of course, has since uh, then come out and say that listen, we, they don't we, know. Money is paid. We don't know about <laughs> this date. So uh, a lot of confusion there uh, at Zifa Barry, and and we go back <laughs> uh, to to Banda Barry, the case of Banda. Uh, the then vice president, uh, who of course uh, made the appointment, or at least announced the appointment of Mongani Mafu, Tondera uh, Indiraya, Sunday Chizambo's assistants in the senior national team, the Warriors, are taking over from Raman Gumbo uh, and Lloyd Mutasa. He was then subsequently, of course, uh, chucked out of Zifam uh, by his colleagues, and at the moment he's fighting a bruising legal battle to be reinstated. You take a look at that case and uh, Malandule surely faces a similar fate because there are a lot of similarities with what he has done uh, when you take a look at the Banda case. Uh, and surely uh, if, listen, we're to call a spade a spade uh, and if everything is even and everything is equal, Malandule surely should be hauled before a disciplinary tribunal just by the standards that Zifa themselves have set. And should be suspended and should have to then go to court uh, to try and get his job back uh, in truth because uh, they said the president would, would get Banda. It's exactly the same scenario. Uh, so for me, I think they put themselves on a very slippery slope when it came to Vice President Gif Banda. But we know that there are uh, uh, political or football politics that at play uh, in the case of uh, uh, Gif Banda more so than uh, the punishment being com- commensurate with the crime. They, they really... Uh, brought a grenade to kill a fly in the house and, and that, that's that's inordinate okay i would love to carry on discussing this one a very hot and topical issue and we can carry on with that uh, discussion on uh, twitter you know the handle at zfm sport coming up we've got a local sports news roundup where we give you some cricket news uh, the lady chevron's in the news this time we've got a golf news scott vincent front and center and then we dive into the castle lager premier soccer league we'll take a quick commercial break and then when we come back it's the zimoko formula one report Hi, my name is Sean Williams, Zimbabwe cricket captain. You're listening to ZFM Sport. Z. And our local sporting news roundup starts with cricket, where Lady Chevron's all rounder Anes Umushangwe underlined her dominance in the Australian statewide women's second grade after taking home all five accolades at a banquet in Glenelg, Adelaide. Uh, Mushangwe, who is on the books of Glenelg Cricket Club, was uh, crowned the best bowler at the club and best bowler in the whole league as well as the MVP. She also received a fourth award for a five-wicket haul she claimed for just two runs and was unbeaten with the bat on 59 runs in Glen Elk's win over Kensington on the 15th of March. What a season Anes Mushangwe had and we say congratulations to her. 
Next up is Golf West. Zimbabwe professional golfer Scott Vincent returned to the field in the Portugal Masters at the Dom Pedro Victoria Golf Course in Viamura, Portugal. With Vincent, who is playing in the European Tour, missed the cut at his last tournament, the Estrela Andalusia Masters in Spain. Today's tournament had big names like Ryder Cup star and former Race to Dubai champion Tommy Fleetwood, who will return to the Portugal Masters for the first time since 2016. Let's wrap it up with the Castle Lager Premier Soccer League. Now, the Premier Soccer League has ruled out the possibility of their clubs returning to training this month. The pronouncement by the PSL comes after Zifa made proposals in their application for exemptions to government where they are requesting for the resumption of football activities. Zipa have indicated in their letter to the Sports Commission uh, they want clubs to regroup next Tuesday in anticipation of starting the 2020 season by mid-next month. However, the league's chief executive, Kenin Devele, yesterday said the time frame set by Zipa was not practical in these COVID-19 environment. He said the club need to put in place all the protocols needed for a safe return to the game before any training can start. Hi, this is Mike Mundell and you can catch me and the team for all the latest breaking news out of the world of sport, local as well as international on your favorite station, my station, your station, ZFM. We are Z Team on ZFM Sport. Z. International Sports News Roundup where the world comes out to play. From sunny Melbourne to the streets of Monaco, the deserts of Bahrain to the jungles of Brazil, get up to speed on the Formula One Report. The Formula One Report is proudly brought to you by Zimoco, the home of F1 brands Mercedes-Benz and Alfa Romeo in Zimbabwe. Zimoco, specialized service for special brands. As usual, plenty of exciting news out of Zimoko. And I can tell you that we've got some great deals again on the service of your older model Mercedes-Benz vehicles because at Zimoko, we care about all our brands of vehicles regardless of how old they are. Even if your car is older than Barry, believe me, we can do something about it at Zimoko. Now, did you know that if looked after and maintained properly, a Mercedes-Benz can last a lifetime. So the question is, do you own a C-Class W203 or W204 manufactured between 2001 and 2014? Or an E-Class W211 or W212 manufactured between 2002 and 2016? An S-Class W221 manufactured between 2006 and 2013? Or an ML164 manufactured between 2006 and 2011? If the answer is yes, we have a special offer on the minor service of these models starting from just 285 US dollars. Now, this service includes air filter, oil filter, the oil change, labor, and any consumables that will be used. Price may vary slightly on your engine size. If you're not sure whether your vehicle qualifies for the special service, uh, please call one of our service advisors on uh, Harare number 754303 up to 9 with your engine or chassis number, and they'll be able to quote you on your vehicle service. Don't go elsewhere and cut corners. Let Zimoko keep your Mercedes-Benz running the way the manufacturer is intended, and let Zimoko keep your Mercedes-Benz on the road for your lifetime. Now I've got another question for you. Do you drive a diesel Mercedes-Benz vehicle with Blue Tech technology? If you do, we currently have a special offer on 10 liters of genuine Mercedes-Benz AdBlue for just 25 US dollars. If you operate your vehicle without AdBlue, the emission standards will no longer be met and the engine management system subsequently prevents the engine being started again until AdBlue is added to the AdBlue tank, which is found next to the fuel tank. Therefore, it's important that you top up the AdBlue tank regularly during vehicle operation or at the latest after receiving the first warning message on the onboard computer on your dashboard. AdBlue is only available from authorized Mercedes-Benz retailers and should not be bought from anywhere else. Otherwise, it can damage your engine. Now stay tuned to find out more news coming out of Zimoko. Z. Onto our Formula One report proper, where Pierre Gasly was left struggling to realize his maiden Formula One victory after delivering a shock result for Alpha Tauri. 
in the Italian Grand Prix, Gasly capitalized on a red flag stoppage to rise from 10th in the first stint to line up third on the grid for the restart behind Lewis Hamilton and Lance Stroll. Gasly was able to pass Stroll before inheriting the lead when Hamilton was forced to serve a stop and go penalty after entering the pit lane when it was closed during the first safety car period. A late charge from McLaren's Carlos Sainz saw Gasly come under pressure entering the final lap running less than one second ahead but he was able to hold on and take the win by just 0.4 seconds uh, let's hear from the race winner Pierre Gasly I mean it was unexpected we just focused on ourselves the whole time since last year improving day by day and, and to have such an outcome in Italy uh, for an Italian team um, and also for myself you know I slept almost all the weekend I'm leaving 30 kilometers from here now it feels almost like home and uh, yeah, it's my first F1 win is unbelievable see now, Chris, the podium in Italy uh, at Monza having a very, very refreshing look. Uh, no Mercedes, no Ferrari, no Red Bull in sight. And uh, in truth, it uh, sort of captures the imagination. We know why. It was because of, of course, it's that penalty that uh, was sustained by Mercedes. But nonetheless, we're happy nonetheless. We're happy nonetheless. Um, I'm just... I, I was particularly shocked um, by the outcome of this race. Um, I think we had gotten used to, I think since right at the beginning of the season, where we know it's a Mercedes 1-2 or Mercedes 1-3, something like that, and Mercedes is in the mix. Um, Ferrari's been having issues, so I think most people have counted them out, myself included. Um, Ferrari has a lot of work to do. I'm not sure when they're going to be able to do it. This is a car they've got for this season and the next. So I'm not sure when they'll be able to rectify all of these issues. But it was just refreshing to see a different kind of race, a bit of a messy race, um, if I can call it that. And to have a different outcome, um, to have someone getting their, um, their first Formula One victory, Pierre Gasly, I think it was a refreshing end to a Formula One race than what we had gotten used to this season. And for Gasly himself, uh, Mike, I know you, you, you love a, a, a story that sort of tugs at your heartstrings. And this one does because Pierre Gasly himself, I mean, dropped by, by Red Bull and uh, sent to their feeder team almost, which uh, obviously used to be called Toro Rosso, but now Alpha Tauri. Uh, and uh, to, to him, it was great to be in a seat and just thought to himself, he'll be coasting through. I don't think he ever thought to himself he'll be sitting atop a, a or standing atop a Formula One podium anytime soon, least of all at Monza. Absolutely, Barry. Uh, Monza, probably the, you know, next to Monaco, the most prestigious uh, thing, race to win. Uh, you know, it's one of the traditional three races uh, on the circuit in Formula One. You talk about uh, Monaco, you talk about Monza, and then you talk about Silverstone. So he will be chuffed, Barry, and it's something of a personal comeback story for him. You, you, you mentioned the misfortune that he went through, the challenges that he went through, you know, where it looked like he wasn't going to make the grade as a Formula One driver. But now, this is actually his second podium finish uh, over the last year after he finished, of course, sec in second place in last year's Brazilian Grand Prix. So he's been doing the work, Barry. He certainly is a skilled and talented driver. And if he carries on doing this, because we know that the car that he's driving is not as great as your Mercedes, is not as great as your Red Bull, for example. But if he carries on being able to take advantage uh, of some of the mishaps that are happening to the leading teams and the leading drivers, it may well force the hand of one of the leading teams uh, to take a punt on him because sooner or later, Lewis Hamilton is going to have to go. Sooner or later, Valtteri Bottas is sooner going to have to go and leave his seat. Yeah. Sebastian Vettel has already uh, abdicated his seat at Ferrari. And at some point, there's going to need to be, uh, should I say, what is it, musical chairs, as always happens in Formula One, where we see drivers sure. moving and shifting from one team to the other. And he may well end up on one of the top seats in Formula One. So I love the work that he's putting in at one of the lesser teams. And for him to have won the race, that's fantastic for him on a personal level. All right, and Lewis Hamilton after that penalty, finishing in seventh, a phenomenal drive coming almost from last after that penalty uh, to finish in seventh position. However, the impact on the Drivers' Championship wasn't as uh, big as we'd have expected because Max Verstappen, DNF, both Ferraris, DNF, meaning that Lewis Hamilton still standing atop the standings on 164 points. Here's Mercedes. 
teammate is in second uh, on 117 points. Max Verstappen in third on 110 uh, points. He's, of course, of Red Bull. Lance Stroll is in fourth position. He's of Racing Point on 57 points. Uh, uh, same amount of points as McLaren's Lando Norris. If you're looking for Charles Leclerc, he's down in seventh position on 45 uh, points. Pierre Gasly, the winner at Monza, is now on 43 points. He's in eighth position. Seb Vettel of Ferrari, the Scuderia, sitting in 13th position on 16 points in the driver's standings. Just not good enough. Constructor standings as they stand. Mercedes out in front, 281 points. Red Bull in second, 158. In third, McLaren on 98. Number four is Racing Point on 82 points. And Renault is sitting in fifth on 71 points. Uh, the next race is the Tuscan Grand Prix which is this coming Sunday. Z. Now, I did promise more good news out of Zimoko, and I have it. If you want five liters of genuine Mercedes-Benz oil, it's going for just US $25 each, available from either one of our workshops. So keep your Mercedes-Benz running the way the manufacturer is intended by using genuine AdBlue and engine oil from Mercedes-Benz. Please visit our workshops at 24 Douglas Road or our service center in Borodo, or email us on inquiries at zimoko.co.zw for more information. Finally, don't forget to pop into our Zimoko showroom in Sam Levy's village and check out our range of vehicles on offer. We either stock or can order all models of Mercedes Benz, Jeep, Fiat, Mitsubishi, Haval, or GWM vehicles. And there is a make and model to suit your lifestyle as well as your budget. The Formula One Report is proudly brought to you by Zimoko, the home of F1 brands Mercedes-Benz and Alfa Romeo in Zimbabwe. Zimoko, specialized service for special brands. Hi, this is Alexandra Maseko and I'm the national basketball team captain and you're listening to ZFM Sport. Z. Around the world in 60 seconds. International sports news. We take off in England where Mitchell Stark believes Australia's rustiness has shown in their defeats to England in the first two T20 internationals. Australia are playing their first international series since March due to the coronavirus pandemic, whereas England played West Indies, Ireland and Pakistan across the formats ahead of this T20 series. Owen Mulden's side have taken an unassailable 2-0 lead in the series with one game to play profiting from an Australia collapse to win the opener by two runs and then easing to a six-wicket win in the second as Josh Butler struck an unbeaten 77. We head over to Atlanta where Dustin Johnson sounded an ominous warning to his rivals ahead of the US Open as he declared he was playing the best golf of his career shortly after being crowned a FedEx Cup champion. Johnson has been denied the richest prize in golf by the narrowest of margins in recent seasons, but he survived a huge test of nerve on the final day of the Tour Championship at East Lake to wrap up a three-stroke victory over Justin Thomas and Xander Schauffele. And we'll touch down in New York where Serena Williams remains on course for a record equaling 24th Grand Slam singles title after coming through an epic fourth round contest to beat Maria Sakkari 6-3, 6-7, 6-3. Dominic Thiem lived up to his billing as the new US Open favorite with a scintillating display to knock out Andy Murray's conqueror Felix Auger Aliassim. The Austrian is favorite for the title after Novak Djokovic, Stu Foltz and Thiem produced a near flawless sprint to the finish line to dismantle mantle his opponent 766161 I am Clemens Matau chicken in midfield you're listening to CFM Sports The big leagues the big teams the big players the beautiful game on CFM Sport with some of uh, Europe's major leagues kicking off uh, this weekend, we have been served up uh, with an appetizer in the form of the UEFA Nations League and the action is becoming thick and fast since the weekend and last night Italy, the Azzurri returned to winning ways as Nicolo Barella's header just before halftime secured a 1-0 victory away to the Netherlands in the Nations League clash at an empty Johan Cruyff arena last night. Italy showed the greater urgency and quality throughout and were full value for the win that follows Friday's disappointing 1-0 home draw with Bosnia-Herzegovina in which the 11-match winning run came to a surprise end. Now, Italy manager Roberto Mancini held his side's win against a fantastic Dutch side. 
the difference is that we played better. <laughs> we played better and we played all over good. the place. Yeah, we play good football. Uh, sometimes this can happen, and uh, also if I think that uh, Netherlands is a fantastic team. The problem is that in this moment it's difficult for all all the players because uh, we didn't start the season in their football club uh, and uh, for uh, all the players it's, uh, it's very very difficult this moment. See. Alois, uh, these are two sides, uh, both Italy and the Netherlands that have had to rebuild over the last couple of years. Both sides have done an absolutely fantastic job. Roberto Mancini with the Azzurri and of course Ronald Koeman who's now gone to Barcelona is the man who rebuilt uh, Holland or the Netherlands as they are called into a formidable side and so this was a good win for Italy because they were up against a, a good team that's moving in a very positive direction in the form of Holland. Yeah, it was actually brilliant. Uh, Mike, just watching the match was actually quite good because on its size, like you already said, that these are sides that are building and they've rebuilt very well. And you know, when I watched this match, the goal that Italy scored was brilliant. They just built, just the build up to the goal. You can actually see this is a side that is up to something. They are quality, they've got technical players. And I was very, very impressed by the way they actually scored that goal. You know, I, I, I watched the goal over and over again on you, and I was like, Okay, this is a side that is actually on up and a very, very uh, side, a, a side that can actually be a very focal side going into the 2022 World Cup. I see them going places, but Poland as well. They showed that they actually quality and it was a good match to watch. And uh, unfortunately, they lost, but I believe both sides are very good value for money. Barry Roberto Mancini uh, rebuilding his reputation. Of course, we'll remember him for uh, leading Manchester City to league glory. Uh, the famous goal scored by Kun Aguero of uh, Mario Balotelli assist in the fourth minute of added time versus Queen's Park Rangers uh, to pip Manchester United at the post. He seemed to go into the wilderness after that. But this job that he has done with an Italy side that had underachieved, uh, you know, three or four years ago, this has got to be Roberto Mancini uh, at his best. Absolutely. It's the regenesis of uh, Roberto Mancini. And uh, we're seeing him doing the things that we uh, knew and loved. Uh, that he did with Manchester City, things such as ensuring that, uh, that there is almost a blitz on your opposition when they're in their own half. Uh, you could see, I mean, albeit that those are very experienced uh, uh, centre halves, uh, uh, marshaled by uh, Giorgio Chiellini. You see them playing more in the opposition half than necessarily in their own half. So that low block that we uh, associate uh, w with the, the Catanaccio uh, has has gone. It's now it's now. Uh, uh, sort of a higher press as it were and then you've got the exciting young talents of the likes of Zaniolo he went off uh, uh, due to injury last night hopefully it's not anything uh, too detrimental he walked off uh, so that's a good sign but players such a, uh, as that ilk is, is always a good sign for Italian football and Roberto Mancini is that central cog that's bringing it all together and making sure that, that it ticks uh, Chris, the man who was the central cog for the Netherlands was Ronald Koeman, uh, Dutch legend, uh, you know, former national team captain, comes into the national team, does a fantastic job of picking up the Dutch and dragging them back to the top table of European football. He's departed now for his dream job at Barcelona. In comes Dwight Lodvegis, and he's under a bit of pressure because the Dutch have been playing well, and it's not a good thing when you have a shaky start like the one that he's experiencing at the moment. Definitely. Um, look, you can, you can almost attribute the shaky start to this is the beginning of um, his tenure with them. But at the same time, when someone has set a certain standard the way, Ron, the way uh, Ronald Koeman did, you have a situation where that is now the expectation. And whether you fail to meet that expectation by a small smidge, whether you're coming against a side like... Um, Italy, where this is an incredibly organized team, they also on a re they were also on a rebuild. There's um, there's always going to be that degree of judgment and expectation, and it's up to him now to see okay, how does he tweak this team that's already been built pretty well, and all he has to do is possibly um, come up with his own way of how these players are going to be going forward and how to get these wins from them because he's got a good team, so that expectation is definitely going to be there. 
Well, the net result or the upshot of uh, Italy's 1-0 victory over the Netherlands last night is that the Azzurri head the League A Group 1 standings with four points from two games followed by the Netherlands and Poland with three points each and Bosnia Herzegovina with just one. Now in the other match in the pool, Poland claimed a 2-1 victory versus Bosnia Herzegovina as Kamil Glitch and Kamil Grosic netted with headers for the visitors. Harris Hadradinovic had given the home side the lead from the penalty spot. In other Nations League news, Phil Foden and Mason Greenwood have been dropped from the England squad after breaching quarantine rules by leaving the England compound to meet women at a public part of the team hotel in Iceland. Manchester City midfielder Foden, who's 20 years old, and Manchester United forward Greenwood, who's 18, made their senior international debuts in Saturday's 1-0 UEFA Nations League win over Iceland. England manager Gareth Southgate said the team area wasn't compromised because the women were not inside that part of the hotel. The FA found out in the early hours and players were sent back to their rooms and ultimately back to the United Kingdom. Now Southgate also said the players were quote naive with their actions. So unfortunately this morning it was brought to my attention that uh, two boys have broken the COVID guidelines in terms of our secure bubble. And so we had to decide very quickly um, that they couldn't have any interaction with the team. The rest of the team wouldn't be able to travel to training. And um, given um, the the procedures that we have to follow now, uh, they'll have to travel back to England separately. Nothing has happened in the areas um, that we occupy in the hotel. I'm still getting to grips with some of the detail, but what is clear is that there was a breach of the COVID guideline. Obviously, they've been naive. Um, uh, We've dealt with it appropriately. I recognise their age, but of course, the whole world are dealing with this pandemic. There's responsibility on every age group to make sure that they play their part in keeping each other safe. We're very clear that no other members of our party have been in contact with those two players. Um, That's why they, they couldn't. Um, go to breakfast this morning Um, they couldn't uh, join us uh, for training so we're we're very clear that we've followed all the guidelines in that regard Um, it's a a very serious situation and um, we've treated it that way and and have acted as quickly as we have been able to see yeah, pretty sad one, this uh, um, uh, Alois, because these are these are good players, uh, but they're, they're human beings as well. Uh, and uh, in truth, they had been uh, in touch with these ladies and decided that what they were seeing online, they wanted to see in person. But this is the wrong time to be doing those actions, isn't it? Yeah, of course, wrong time to do the actions. But you have to say that these are human human beings and they are boys you know uh, they're energetic and everything you know <laughs> you know some, you know I, I'm, 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 the, I'm the i'm the wrong person i'm the wrong person to be judging these boys you know let me pass let me let me not let me not be the one coming on this one. <laughs> I, I think it i think alois is guilty of having uh <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, you know, sometimes, yeah, the, it's like, like better than people put it, it's the curiosity. You just want to, like, get in touch, you know, get in touch or check check them out. And, you know, these, these are teenagers, guys. Uh, let, let it pass. Let it pass, guys. Uh, it's a good thing there were no bubbles during your time, man. That's it. Yeah, let, let, it, let it pass, guys. Alois, <laughs> Alois, not go. disclosing, not <laughs> disclosing anything from the past. We'll let that water run firmly underneath that bridge. <laughs> so let me jump to Chris. Yeah, let it pass. It's, let it go. it's sad. Look, very promising talents, and in truth, it, the door isn't shut on them on their England careers uh, by no means. It just means that they're not, they're not participating in the match against Denmark tonight. Uh, a little bit naive of them, but the team can carry on without them. The team can carry on without them. Um, I think what Southgate said about them being naive, I think these are they, they should stick to football and never turn to a life of crime because they are the world's dumbest criminals. Um, <laughs> and look, yeah, it's, you got it's, that it's right. a blip. It's a blip in their career, and not in their careers yeah. necessarily, just in 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 the headlines at the moment. What's 
What's a little bit uh, more serious is the fact that these bubbles exist for a reason. COVID-19 is still a very big issue. And when you breach the rules, you are exposing other people potentially to this virus. And it is a deadly virus. So I think that just needs to be in, um impressed on these players. I would expect that at this point, it would be something that they would be very conscious of. Um, but it's sad that they made this kind of a decision. Look, they're young and everything, but I think we always have to remember COVID-19 is, it, it may not affect them, but it could affect the next person who they pass it on to. So they just, you know, they need a bit of a hiding, proverbial hiding. Oh, yeah, they were naive, right, they need to be punished, yeah. All right, Mike, less, less about my sports and more about football. Uh, yeah. you, you talked about uh, <laughs> uh, England, Eng- England and Gareth Southgate uh, under pressure because, yes, they won the last game, but it was last gasp. It was through the uh, a penalty um, and they needed Iceland to miss a penalty of their own. Uh, it wasn't the greatest performance. They need to put on a show tonight, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they need to play well tonight. And I think it's more than just about the result. Uh, I think uh, what gives people belief, especially the fans as well as the media, is the style uh, with which you go about your business. When you yeah. watch the level of performance, uh, for example, we watched Spain annihilate Ukraine the other night. Uh, it just wasn't uh, the goals that they got, but it was also the manner in which they went about their business. It could quite easily have been 8 nil. They were that dominant, they were imposing, there were shades of the old Spain that we saw under Luis Aragones uh, that won their first major trophy when they won the Euro Championships. The same old Spain that the World Cup uh, won the World Cup with uh, uh, Del Bosque. We saw shades of that. And so that's the same thing we want to see with England. We want to see England playing good football. It isn't just about winning, but it's also about giving your fans and the media belief because once the media begin to believe What happens is that, Barry, when you have a blip, when you suffer the odd reversal, they have the confidence that you're able to turn it around because you've got a system and a style that's in place. But the problem with just winning for the sake of winning is that you never get to convince anyone despite you going on these long unbeaten runs because every match you play, it seems like you don't quite know how you got over the line or it always seems like, you know what, you won, but the other team was always in the game. And Alois, uh, if that show doesn't come up and they just win for winning's sake, you've got to think to yourself that the FA is going to give Southgate quite a bit of rope and, and give him, be very patient with him because they got to a World Cup semi-final. Uh, this is a golden generation of players and they expect that this being the golden boy, him as Gareth, Gareth Southgate, having played for England, uh, he, he should be the one to take them to the promised land, even if they're not seeing the direction very rosy. Yeah, I think they'll give him time. You know, they can actually look back and say, you know what, we went all the way to the semifinals with a very, uh, from, from for me, uh, inexperienced side at the World Cup. And they are looking at the 22 World Cup. These boys are going to be more experienced, more mature. So I'm sure they'll give, they'll give him time. They will say that this is just a blip. This performance is okay, but we'll give him time. But we all believe, you know, they see this belief that England have got the players at the moment that can actually do well. Like Mike said, they only need yeah. to make people believe believe that they are good enough they need to blitz they need to actually wipe away our opponents like we, we believe in them so they need to show yeah. that to the fans that they can actually do it because at this moment i think everybody else actually believes that england is very very good side and to show tonight they'll be playing against denmark that's the team that has been selected and designated as the one to take the punishment if there is going to be punishment by England. Uh, that game is on tonight. Also, other fixtures in the Nations League. Uh, tonight, Belgium take on Iceland. France will take on Croatia in a tasty affair. And then Sweden will take on Portugal. Neymar, Mbappé, Dibai, and now, Tino Kadebere. Enjoy the taste of the French football on a ZFM Sport. Some news from Ligue 1, Paris Saint-Germain uh, sporting director Leonardo has hit out at the French FA for the manner in which he learned that Kylian Mbappe has tested positive for COVID-19. It was revealed by the media yesterday that the 21-year-old forward had the virus and had left the France national team camp ahead of their national 
Nations League match against Croatia tonight. The statement from the FFF quickly followed up, but Leonardo claims that no one had informed PSG of their player having contracted the coronavirus. He said, I find it completely unacceptable that we learn from the press that one of our players is positive. They released a statement and sent the player home, but no one from the Federation has communicated this to us. No one has contacted us. Mike, um, bit of a breakdown in communication there. Um, is the sporting director correct in his assertion that PSG should have learned first of what was going on with Kylian Buffett? In a way, but I think uh, it indicates a, a, a greater frustration with the fact that they're losing one of their most prized assets uh, and for a long time because I think he's going to miss uh, at least four matches in the league. Uh, and Kylian Mbappe right now is the symbol of uh, PSG together with uh, Neymar. So he's got every right to be frustrated. Uh, I also would agree with him that um, I think the French Football Federation could have been faster in their communication. I'm sure communication was going to get to the club, the PSG, at some point. And uh, from what I am sensing, it was probably when the players were going to return to their football clubs, which is after uh, tonight's international being tomorrow. Uh, but I feel that when something like this happens, this is a major development. This is the coronavirus. Uh, this is something that influences a club and a player uh, for several weeks rather than just a day or two. I, I feel that the communication should have been immediate. And Alois, if you take a look at that uh, PSG squad, uh, you've got a couple of other players as well who are um, testing positive for coronavirus. And going into this next season of Ligue 1, pa can Paris Saint-Germain realistically be able to hold their own without these players? It's difficult because when you hear that Neymar is, is tested positive and uh, Mbappe is tested positive, then you start to, you start getting worried. Then you look at a situation whereby these players are friends, they move around together. So who else is going to get it? Because they 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 hang out together. So uh, for me, if you ask me, they they can't afford. So they can just only hang on and hope that these guys recover quickly and and get on with it. But <laughs> without Mbappe and Neymar, I don't see the attacking force of. Of Paris and Germain, seriously, honestly. Harry, a bit of a dent here in the start of their campaign. Is this an opportunity for other teams in League A to possibly get a leg up and to get ahead of PSG, get some points ahead of PSG while they're in this uh, bit of a struggle position for possibly the next four weeks? Oh, inter interesting that you use the phrase leg up, especially after we've spoken about Greenwood and uh, Phil Foden. Uh, <laughs> um, you yeah. dirty man! <laughs> 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 but nonetheless, I think uh, there, there, there's two opportunities here. There's opportunities for players, other players in the Paris Saint-Germain lineup, your Mare Cardis, your, your uh, Agnel Di Marias, uh, to, to make the step up and, and, and uh, uh, fill those roles that are being vacated by uh, the two players that have uh, tested. The opportunity is for the other clubs in Ligue 1 to uh, at least, if not stay within touching distance of Paris Saint-Germain, at least even create a cushion or buffer of points uh, if Paris Saint-Germain should start dropping points. Mike talked about the fact that likely four games are uh, missed. Uh, that's a, that's a, a healthy buffer. There's, there's uh, 12 points on offer there. So who knows what will happen there. So those two opportunities need to be seized by each of those categories. Time running out on the show, but enough time for us to give you a quick update. Coming out of the Bundesliga, Thiago Alcantara has been given additional time off by Bayern Munich and the next few days will be crucial in deciding his future. The midfielder could yet move to Liverpool if Jorginho Wijnaldum leaves the club for Barcelona, where Ronald Koeman is keen to bring him in. Thiago recently insisted that he had never publicly declared his desire to leave Bayern, but his house is up for sale and he has said goodbye to his teammate. So, very interesting what this one, Barry. Uh, it looks like he is leaving, but it's just a matter of time. He's biding his time. He's waiting for something to happen. He's some waiting for someone to make the call. Yeah, and uh, with news that Barcelona has joined the race to sign him as well, that's not pleasant news for Liverpool fans. Uh, so, it's making me a little bit anxious as a Liverpool fan, but as a pundit, I think uh, the, the writing is on the wall, in inverted commas, the wall, the same wall of his house that's on sale, uh, that I think he will be leaving Munich. Uh, where he's headed is the only question that remains to be answered. The hope is... He'll be on Merseyside uh, come the end of the transfer window. Well, we won't, we won't be here in the next few seconds because we're out of time. We will be back 
tomorrow. Don't miss that show. It should be a good one. May God richly bless you. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Manandi, out. And it's Messi. It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. The biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, on top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world in front of any player in the world and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport on CFM Stereo. My station, your station.